And we are back on Game Time. Rick Kamla. Rip Hamilton's been nice enough to drop by. Dennis Scott and Greg Anthony. The dust has settled at the Wells Fargo Center. The 76ers win Game 6, 82-75 over the Celtics to force a Game 7 Saturday in Boston. And before the game, Allen Iverson, 76er great, uh, walked the game ball out to center court. It was an emotional scene, and we have Allen Iverson on the phone right now. Allen, it is a tremendous pleasure uh, and privilege to have you on the phone. Um, really one of the greatest players in NBA history. And, Alan, I want you to take us through your emotions uh, about five minutes before walking the ball out to center court when you were out there and then when you walked away. A very emotional time for you, right? Man, definitely. First of all, you know, I want to thank y'all for having me on. And I love y'all panel, man. Y'all got, <laughs> got dudes up there I really love. <laughs> That's how we do it here, Alan. What up, Greg? What's going on? What's going on, yeah? <laughs> what up, baby? My man, D. Scott. You got Rip. Hey, man, it's all love. But, hey, man, it, it got it got so emotional for me, you know what I mean? But before I walked out of there, um, man, I, I actually was in a rush to get out of there, man, because I, I didn't want to break down. And, you know, my eyes start watering and, you know, my bottom lip start trembling and my legs start getting weak on me. You know, I, I I was in a hurry to get off the court, man. But <laughs> it was a it was an emotional moment, man. I, I I love these people here so much, man. And you know, I I really feel that they respect me for everything that I gave on the basketball court, just playing every game like it was my last. And I, I mean, it was just a extraordinary ex experience for me. It's something that I'll cherish and remember for the rest of my life. And I was glad that I. You know, they invited me here to do it, and, 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 and the chance for me to accept it, um, I'm even more proud of myself. Chuck, Rip Hamilton. What's up, baby? Hey, man, <laughs> uh, it was good to see you out there tonight, man. I mean, like I said, a kid growing up in the Philly area, man, you brought so much, you know, to the city. You brought so much to the 76ers. You know, I always say you, you're, you're probably one of the few guys that changed the game and the dimension of the game of NBA basketball, and uh, I just wanted to tell you, man, I respect that, man. And every, when I seen you out there tonight, I was like, all right, man, just take off the sweatsuit, you know, uh, tell Doe to give you a jersey, you know, so you can get back out there and do what you've been doing for years. But, uh, man, I just can't wait to see you back on the floor because I know you'll be back out there because, you know, I'm truly a fan. Everybody on this panel is truly a fan, and we miss you out there. I love you too, man. I feel, I, you know, I, I feel the same way, man, I, you know, um, they was asking me questions about retiring and all that. I'm, you know, I told them I don't even use that word anymore. I don't even want to hear that word. Not at because all. Because I feel like I want to play so much, and, and I feel like I, I have so much to, to to offer. You know what I mean? And, you know, it was just a – like I said, man, it was just a, a great experience. I was so happy that my son was able to see it and, and, and be a part of it. I mean, it was, it was excellent. And the people – and that organization is first class, and the fans are even better. And the one thing I always say, Alan, I still, I, well, I see you in practice every day, and I still believe you better than 75% of the p people in the NBA right now, so you definitely should be back out there on that floor. You know, I, I'm, I'm not going, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to stop because I know what I want to do in my heart. You know, and I understand the mistakes that I made and the choices that I made, you know, being a professional athlete. But I'm 36 now, and, you know, I think the best part about everything, um, even though I, I just finished that tour in China and playing over there, is that I'm healthy and, you know, my body is healthy and, you know, I don't have any nagging injuries, you know, like I used to have going through a grueling 82-game season. But, I mean, I, I'm all in, you know, and I accept the fact that, that maybe one day, you know, that I mean, I accept the fact that, you know, I might not be able to play in the NBA again, but the NBA has been so great for me and it's been great to me. You know, it enabled me to be a household name, but I still want to play on a higher level wherever that is. And, and hopefully God give me that opportunity. Well, yeah, I think I speak loudly for the fans on this one. I'm sure everyone's happy to hear that you've grown up and matured. What do you miss most about the game now that you sit back and you watch Philadelphia play tonight? Playing, <laughs> as simple as that. Just, just playing it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it, it. The way I felt tonight was being in the arena, and and it's it just like being 
uh, growing up as a as a kid, you know, you see your your friend getting in a fight and he's getting jumped <laughs> and he's in a war and you can't help him. You know what I mean? Uh, and and that's the feeling that I got. You know, um, I sat in there and you know, looking at the game, I, I don't know, remember the last time I watched the game as just you know a fan. You know what I mean? So you know, just sitting in there, being in there and not being able to, to get on the basketball court and, and watching other guys do what I love to do, that was hard. But, you know, the the whole situation with me coming back, you know, I guess that overwhelmed me so much that, you know, it didn't bother me as, as, as much being a spectator. Hey, uh, as everybody, I'll echo it, man. Obviously, we, we all are big fans of what you've accomplished in this game, a future Hall of Famer. And I used to tell people, you know, you were the most intimidating guard to play against. I used to hate to have to guard this man because he would <laughs> never take a possession off offensively. And, and, Trust and, me, I'm still <laughs> the most intimidating guard. <laughs> I'm never, my confidence is never going. It's never going to go anywhere. God gave me this, so I'm gonna keep this. You should keep it. You know what I want to ask you about, though. You know, obviously, your career on the on the court, well documented and, and, and filled with accomplishments. And, and you had a lot of difficulties and adversity you faced over the course of your life. Are you having an right. opportunity now to share your story with young people to try to give them an opportunity to maybe fulfill their dreams and hopes uh, as you that's move the, forward? That's the, that's the easiest thing for me to do. You know what I mean? That's the easiest thing for me to do. All of us want this lifestyle. All of us want to be able to be a colossal superstar and, you know what I mean, have all the the money and everything that, you know, uh, you will want in your life. But, you know, it's so easy for me because, you know, I was the I was the young guy that, you know, before the tattoos, now you see everybody in there with tattoos. You had guys with cornrows. I took a beating for that at a young age. I didn't know how to really take it, you know what I mean, because I thought I was just being me. I, I didn't think anything was wrong with it, and I was destroyed in the media for, for being myself. Now I get the opportunity to look at guys and they dress and act the way they want to act. And, you know, they, they had their tattoos and they, you know, listen to whatever they listen to and this, that, and the third. And, you know, it's like a bittersweet thing because I feel good that I had to take a beating for these other guys to be accepted the way they wanted to be accepted. So it's so easy for me to speak to kids and tell them what's right to do, what's wrong. And, you know, I, I've, I've been... I've been poor. I've been rich. You know what I mean? I, I, I've, I've been through it all. I've been criticized. I've been praised. So, you know, my story is, is easy for me to, to, to tell to kids and tell them what I right to do and what's not right to do. So, you know, it's, it's just a blessing for me. I think God gave me this blessing and put me on this earth to be able to help other people. Man, I have no problem doing it. AI, we're blessed to have you on the program right now, and I wanted to ask you, are you going to be in Boston on Saturday to check out the other AI and the 76ers in Game 7 against the Celtics? No way. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean no way? <laughs> no way. You, do, you, you know already, if, if, if I was a Sixers for that long, you know what type of relationship that yes. I have with those fans already. <laughs> you know, obviously some of them love me, but I'm sure the majority of them can't stand me. <laughs> you know, whenever I came in that building, I came to play. So, you know, I, I, I doubt that that would happen, but I will be there with them in spirit. And, and you know, I, I love, you know, uh, Kevin Garnett. I love Paul Pierce. I love Rondo. I love Ray Allen. You know, I love those guys. Because I've been to war with them, and I and I know them all for the basketball court. But you know, I I played with you know these guys that I cheered for tonight. You know what I mean? And I've seen them go through their struggle. I've seen Lou Williams have to go down to D League, and you know, and had to fight his way to being a household name. So you know, it was just a it, it was a, a personal respect and love that I had for them. But I have love for the guys on the Boston Celtics, and I'm out of the way. You know, I'm just I'm I'm just a fan rooting for guys that I like. You know, I don't I don't have a favorite team or anything like that. You know, I just love basketball. I, I love guys getting better, and you know what I mean, and putting on the show. 
Well, AI, there might not be that much love for you up in Boston via the rivalry, but we got a, love, a lot of love for you here on NBA TV. Any chance that you could come join us on Saturday for Game 7, Sixers Celtics? Why not? Come Why on, not? come Especially to the ATL, the baby. Come on, I, baby. I can, be, I, can be, I, can be com I can be comfortable around you guys. That's the <laughs> one thing I know. You know, obviously, obviously I, I got a you know, personal, personal relationship with three of them, but I respect and love you, too, so... Thank you, my okay, brother. It'll be an easy job for me. It'll be an easy job for me. Okay, hey, uh, Saturday night, I'm in the studio, so you have an open invitation, and you will be here Saturday night. I ain't say nothing like that. Hey, Alan, we're not trying to put you on the spot, man. Here's just an invitation. We love yeah. you here at NBA TV. We have for years. Trying to put somebody on the spot. You did just put me on the spot. <laughs> you know I, I mean, did. did. You, know I can, you know Uncle D. Scott can do that, too. You know I can put you on the spot. No, it's all love. <laughs> it sure is, man. Alan, uh, congratulations on uh, the warm reception you got in Philadelphia tonight, uh, sending the game ball out there. Just a terrific moment for you. We miss you, man. We wish you were balling in the NBA. If that doesn't work out, uh, we, we hope you catch on in the Philippines, China, wherever you want to continue your basketball career. We will be watching and we will be cheering. Alan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, all man. I love you. Love you, too. Alan Iverson, 2001 <laughs> MVP with the Philadelphia 76ers, over 24,000 points uh, in his career in the NBA. Just sensational. What a great guy, too, by the way. Awesome guy. I got a chance to play with him in Detroit. I mean, he's great. You know, he gets criticized for a lot of stuff. I mean, out of Rasheed Wallace, Allen Iverson probably was one of my greatest teammates that I ever played against. And uh, he doesn't get a lot of credit for that. But guys in the locker room know who AI is. Mm -hmm. and, I, and they not just respect him, but know him how great he is as a person. And uh, he'll be back out on that floor sometime soon. And guys, when you listen to him talk, it's not just, you know, what he did on the court. Talk about his intelligence and his perspective and his wisdom. Well, you just hit all those correct words. See, I've, I've known him since he's been a kid when he first got to Georgetown. And just watching him grow as a player is one thing, but him grow as a person. Talked about the tattoos, talked about the cornrows. We didn't get a chance to ask him about the whole practice thing. Because I've had conversations with him off record and told me that he takes practice serious. That situation got blown out of proportion. But just the fact that he understands who he is today and where he's come from to me just sends volumes that a young man that can mature knowing all the things he's gone through in his personal life and you know what love him or or hate him and most of i know we all love him most fans of the game love him he's the frank sinatra of the nba you know he, he did it his way his way he That's played right. the game the way he wanted to play it and he played at an extremely high level a hall of fame level mm -hmm. and so you got to tip your hat to him he is one of the most beloved players we've had in this game there's no doubt he will be in Springfield one day enshrined in the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. 